Uh, I would like to introduce uh, three speakers for tonight. So tonight's uh, subject title is, we are basically carrying forward from our last conversation, uh, wherein Panthani mentioned that uh, people across different generations and time frame that has come to US in during different time frame, they are carrying forward dharma in their own unique way. Meaning somebody who could have come in 70s is carrying forward differently versus somebody in 2000 versus somebody who is, who is a recent arrival. So having said that, for I me mean, tonight, uh, we have uh, three uh, main speakers. One is our own uh, Ganshamji. Uh, he, he migrated to US in 70s. And then we have one of my best friend, uh, Santos Vishwanathan. He moved to US around in like 2000 or something. And we have a cricket youth, uh, Paddy Shetty, Pradeep Shetty, uh, who moved to US about 10 years ago. So with that being said, I think, uh, how about uh, if uh, each of you uh, introduce yourself very briefly, speakers, and then we formally start a session wherein Ganshamji can take a lead. And we, we I mean, uh, proceed as per our discussion. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let pe people are still joining. Do you want to wait for people to join? Well, Ganshyamji, given that uh, this conversation that I mean, keeps on going more than 45 minutes, right? I mean, it's not yeah. fair for the people who, who like come on time, right? Okay. And uh, and I mean, post about forty five minutes, you know, some people might drop out. So so I mean, you know, yes, we did give five minutes, and that's plenty. So I guess we should start. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Ganshyam Gupta. I came to this country in nineteen seventy as a graduate student. I did my PhD and then went to academia. After that, I took a job in industry in New Jersey. Second next job was in Chicago. Both places I worked about five years each. And then in 1988, I came to Washington and worked for FDA. I am a by profession, I am a statistician. I have PhD in statistics. Cool. Thank you, Ganshamji. Uh, Shantosh Bhai, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Sure. Uh, namaskar, friends. Uh, my name is Santosh Vishwanathan. Uh, I came to the States in um, 98, uh, 1998. Um, so most, for a short period of time, I was in the Northwest uh, in uh, Portland, Oregon, but mostly um, um, came here to the Washington area and have been here with my uh, wife and son. Um, my son was born in 2000. So uh, since that time, we've been in this uh, area. Yeah. Um, I just do some consulting for the government and for, uh, you know, uh, the industry. That's it. Cool. Thank you, Santos. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, Paddy, would you like to go ahead? Mahindra Bhai, when Santosh Vishnathanji, your screen name says Bhaskar Kumaresan. Oh, uh, actually, let me uh, fix it. Okay, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I know you are not Bhaskar Kumarayson. Okay. <laughs> All right. I um, mean, next we have uh, Paddy Shetty. Paddy, could you please briefly introduce yourself before we start the program? Yeah. Hi there. Uh, this is Pradeep Shetty, uh, commonly known as Paddy uh, in the local cricket area. I came to US in two thousand eight. Uh, I am basically from Mumbai and. Uh, uh, like I'm a Java developer. Uh, I work for some federal projects. I have worked for some federal projects currently working for Pennsylvania state government. And uh, I have got two kids. <clears throat> one is uh, six years old and one is five months old. Uh, uh, that's it about me. Cool. Thank you very much, Perry. And uh, we all appreciate you I mean, coming on board to share your side of the story, how, how you will be forwarding your dharma through your, through your kids, you know. <laughs> So uh, with this basic introduction, I think uh, we should start our program. So Ganshamji, would you like to take a lead and uh, talk about your experience 
and thereafter santosh and then paddy will share his thoughts and once you all three share your thought process on uh, how you are carrying for dharma i mean passing on to next generation and uh, later on if uh, people have questions you know we're going to open up the floor and we will have a interactive discussion okay so ganesham ji okay i think the question is uh, about the how you carry your dharma to your next generation well let me tell you i got married in 1973 and have one son in 74 and then second one in 1980 so they are already you know uh, in their 40s actually uh, now when i came in those days there was nothing like any kind of religious hindu program anywhere i was in a small jhun city town uh there were about uh, including faculty there were about uh, 100 graduate students and faculty together and uh, most of the graduate students were single and faculties were married people with families and so we did not have any kind of religious program at all other than like uh, meeting once a month and getting a <laughs> hindi movie from new york and watch the hindi movie that was the only thing at that time even there was no indian grocery store anywhere we used to get our grocery from chicago by mail why was in lexington kentucky you should know that it was is at that time it was a very small university town about 150000 population now probably it is double the population of that so now how did we convey our dharma to our kids first of all at that time for our older son his name is samir He is a physician, by the way, in Minneapolis. Uh, he, you know, he when he was growing us, I was still finishing my PhD. So, really speaking, we did not have any kind of time to do any kind of religious program, and there was no nothing like this. Really speaking, we never even thought about religion. I, you know, to be frank, okay, because when you are living in as a you know, student population. there is not much you can do other than maybe get together with your with your friends or some later on once i got married we had some you know meetings with or we had some communications with the families also mostly they were professors in the university so that was the only one after that we moved to carbondale illinois i was teaching there then moved to new jersey that's where first time something like hinduism came to picture uh that was because we were several families and we thought that we should have some india association so we started india association we started a hindi program hindi education program my wife was teaching there in the hindi class hindi classes and so some through hindi classes you can say that uh, we conveyed some kind of stories about the dharma and mm-hmm. those things but other than that there was again there was no temple or any kind of you know ritual type of programs in that area at that time i'm talking about early 80s okay 82 to 83 around that time there was not much nothing actually speaking well i did not stay there very long and i moved to chicago got another job there also again we had a very similar situation not much different than that and so but what i would say that how we conveyed our dharma to our kids it is through what they learn from parents okay so whatever you learn like i learned whatever i learned in my village in india from i come from a very small village in rajasthan so whatever i learned from my parents or from the villagers our village were almost actually 100% hindus uh, there were about 90% yadavs farmers and another 10% population about 500 or so that's it so whatever we learned was through the living not by any kind of rituals like i would say frankly speaking i never attended satyanarayan katha truly speaking when i was in village there was no satyanarayan katha only time there was some kind of religious program was when there was a marriage death or birth those were the only three times there was any marriage program other than that there was no no religious programs were there 
So really speaking, I would say that I learned dharma through society, and that's what I tried to con. I know I that's what I had. I conveyed to our kids at that time that what so you know what you do, what dharma is really. It's the character you built in your you know kids, and so we conveyed what we learned. We conveyed that what is the karma is that our kids know what karma means. That you do whatever is right for you, whatever you think is right, try your best. And I think that's what our kids have done. Truly speaking, and I'm very proud of them. They believe in they. Are, our elder son doesn't much care about the religion, but he does believe in karma. He is very much very honest, very hardworking person. And same, my younger son, by the way, by the time he came, we were in New Jersey, and he did get get little bit of dharma. But then when we came to Washington and I joined VHP, and that's where the, I think camps started. And my younger son, especially, he did uh, join the camps and other things. So slowly, slowly, he learned more than what my older son learned. Yeah. So I would say that conveying dharma to your next generation really comes first from your family, from your self, from parents. The way parents behave, where parents you know act, kids learn from that. So if you are honest, they will realize it. Don't think that they don't notice it; they notice it. If you are honest, if you if you are cheating something, they'll know that too. Okay, so. i think dharma it comes from the character of parents if parents are honest they will learn that and it will be in their character so and that is what really dharma is what is hindu dharma no matter what dharma you call it you know dharma means you know in this case that uh, whatever you do do your best okay and that's what i think that gita says in our books and so that's what we We learn, and that's what I've been able to convey. This is very different than what a lot of people who came later on from India, those who came in '90s. At later, by that time, there are a lot more Indians were there. The religious temples were there, a lot of rituals were there, and so many things were going on. And so, I think in my experience is very, very different than what those who came in '90s or later. Well, uh, I can answer other questions if you have any. So, no, I mean, Ganesham uh, ji, that is, is uh, you. I mean, you did a very good introduction about uh, how you passed on dharma. Now we would like to hear from Santosh and then from Paddy. And once you all three are done, then we go ahead and then open up for them question answers. Okay. So okay. thank you, uh, Ganesham ji. Santosh bhai, would you like to take on? Welcome. Welcome. Sure. Uh, thank you. Um, I'll try. <laughs> um, so, uh, like I said, uh, came in the uh, in ninety eight towards the end of the nineties. Um, was in the Washington area. The temple was just about that time, just coming up. Um, before uh, my son was born, probably um, there was not much. We were not much into. um going to the temples or um things like that but um not much religious i don't consider myself very religious person uh but i do um i'm a firm believer in um the hindu dharma and uh the concept of uh, advaita vedanta and stuff like that so um um i'm a, a um disciple of uh, ramana maharshi and so um i have always been uh, spiritually inclined so when once my son was born so then we started um uh, focusing a little more on that side the spirituality side um and basically like you know for my son whatever we did was uh, we made sure that we celebrated all the festivals um the traditional way in the house uh starting with that uh we made sure that there was um, like you know the lighting of the lamp and things like that the rituals that needs to be done so the child would understand we taught him a lot of shlokas uh, initially and then also sent him to um um a sanskrit uh, learning a shloka learning uh, class so wherein he learned some more um shlokas and things like that 
Um, we did send him to a Tamil school. Uh, uh, we, for some time, we even went to Chinmaya Mission, uh, wherein we used to be in uh, Germantown, but we used to come all the way to Silver Spring here and uh, uh, participate and make sure that, you know, he had some interaction with the other children uh, of um, Hindu families so he could interact with them um, and learn from them, right? So that's, that's those kind of things were done. Um, yeah, so generally like, you know, the first important thing I think is that, you know, uh, like uh, Ganshamji said, uh, uh, children do learn from um, their parents. So our most important thing is to be a good example uh, and uh, try and uh, do, um, you know, follow the religion uh, or the traditions at home so that it'll kind of uh, rub off on them. Hopefully it'll rub off on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Cool. Fantastic. So, all right, cool. Appreciate uh, Santos Bhai. Uh, Paddy, would you like to take the thread from here? Yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, I, I was born and raised in India completely. So uh, after my engineering, I got a job in uh, TCS. And after that, I came to US. But uh, uh, since my childhood, I used to always go to Mandir. And I used to always attend all the religious functions. So my mom always told me to go to Mandir. But at a certain point, uh, I had maybe uh, developed a relationship between God, uh, Bhagwan, I would say. So uh, my mom... Uh, didn't have to tell me that, okay, attend Mandir or go here, go to this satsang or anything. I used to always do it religiously on my own. Uh, so that was like dharma and religion is instilled in me. And uh, I religiously follow my religion. And uh, when I came to US, maybe thanks to Ganshamji and Santosh, all the uh, groundwork was done, all the mandirs where everything was set up. Because of which I was able to go to Mandir and uh, I was able to attend all the Navratri, uh, Dandiya, maybe <clears throat> maybe Garba or Ganpati festivals. I, I, I actually came to Pennsylvania where there was a Hari temple in Camp Hill. Uh, and I mean, I used to attend like at least a couple of uh, times uh, in a month I used to attend and at least followed all the uh, uh, main festivals, maybe Shivratri or Navratri as I said, and uh, I want same to be uh, in my kids as well. Uh, I have got uh, two kids, as I said, one is six years old. She learns Bharatanatyam. She learns uh, singing from uh, Sangeet Visharat. We talk, try to talk Hindi and uh, our mother tongue Tulu uh, to her, and she uh, gets more of it and she can talk it as well. <clears throat> And I want her to attend uh, like uh, uh, VHP camps or if there are any uh, like uh, uh, Sanskrit or any of the uh, uh, any of the books or any of their classes which which instills dharma or which teaches about the Hindu religion like Gita, I would be really glad. And that is what I want my kid to learn. So uh, so this is my concept of dharma, and I want to pass it on to my kids as well. Uh, because it was passed on to me by my parents. And uh, yeah, uh, I would like to uh, stop there. Cool. Cool. Uh, fantastic introduction, Perry. So, I mean, uh, what I learned from all the three, three speakers is they are not uh, quote unquote religious, but they, but they try to forward the uh, good way of living or I mean, dharma through their own act, right? So that is awesome, and uh, the, I mean that's what we have been doing, you know, since since ages. But uh, given that in United States uh, we are less than one percent of the population, right, and uh, not many know much about Hindu dharma, right, and uh, that's where uh, uh, people intentionally or un unintentionally. Uh, end up uh, maybe degrading dharma or something like that. In particularly, what I would like to share with you is recently in New York, uh, some politician was trying to pass a resolution 
to to I mean convey that the that our dharmic symbol called swastika is a sign of hate, right? Which is not true. So my so my question across across the board to all these three generation is. Uh, uh, how would you, or I mean, how do you think your child will defend? Uh, I mean, this kind of Hindu phobia, if like because 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 the world today is very much divided. So unless you have researched into your dharma, your way of living, and all that thing, right? I mean, I feel that it could be difficult to defend dharma because when you say that. Uh, your child is learning good karma through your own act. That is beautiful. But then any religion can, can I mean, give that example that, okay, uh, uh, I mean, uh, you rip as you sow, which is a theory of karma, right? That is common across, across all, I mean, uh, all, I mean, religion. So why would your son or daughter stand up as a proud Hindu American? Anybody? Um, hi. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hi. So, um, I would just like to say that growing up, so I was born and raised here. So, um, growing up, how I represented my culture was, um, openly celebrating my, like my culture, which would mean like, if it was Diwali, I would dress up in a sari and go to school and you know um have like put on all like the bindi and the jewelry and everything um and, and regularly i did wear indian clothes at school so people would have that um like that like you they would know about it you know um and especially like during the holidays because they would ask you like oh why you do this and that and i and some of them what they would say is oh i don't want to offend you or uh, i don't want to ask you a stupid question but then i would have to say like no it's better that you ask and you know than you not know you know so i made it a point to you know that you should ask questions and of course as hindus we should know the answer to why we do certain things or why we celebrate holidays um and and that's how i represent um like my culture and um just one more thing to add to like you know children picking up dharma and like hindu culture if you teach your child like a Hindu, in, in Indian language, your ancestral language or your native tongue, that is like one of the best ways to pass down your culture because with language comes culture and they go hand in hand. And if you do that, then that'll be like a plus point for them because growing up, I learned Gujarati and Hindi and I can speak and write it and read it. So not to not like bragging or anything, because I'm not perfect, but <laughs> I just wanted to like, you know, it's like, you know, if you think, OK, your kid was born here. So that's like an excuse for them to not know a language. Well, no, it should be like like a kind of like a like one more thing that you should be like proud of, like, oh, my kid was born here, but my kid knows how to speak their native, like my native tongue or my ancestral tongue. So just wanted to point that out. Cool. Thanks. Uh, so Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, what was said? Uh, uh, I agree one hundred percent. Right. So, uh, the only way you can you can um, represent your um, uh, Hindutva is by living the way. Right. So, uh, my son is proud to wear the, his kurtas, and uh, when we go to the temple, we dress up as traditionally as possible. Uh, of course, uh, men, uh, sometimes uh, the proper, what do you call the Western shirt is the, is the Indian traditional okay. dress, right? <laughs> but but uh, we do wear the kurta. And um, yeah, we perform when you, when you go to um, um, different uh, celebrations, like, you know, weddings and, uh, you know, um, other, other religious uh, uh, ceremonies, you dress up as, uh, uh, your um, 
uh, with your traditional clothes. So that that definitely helps. And India is a country of rich culture. So like you said, uh, uh, we have to teach our children the language. So um, uh, that's one of the most important thing. If you can speak the language at home and then they can speak with you, sometimes they don't speak back, right? You tell them something in in your own language, and then they respond back in English. But that's okay. I think I think that's okay. Uh, but I, they understand it perfectly well. And when it comes, uh, when push comes to shove, they they can speak with their parents. But the question you asked, uh, Mahindra, was how do they defend the um, um, the religion with their friends? Uh, I think I think it is by um, answering questions and making sure that people understand. Um, um, what what we do and why we do and most 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 common question is why do you guys have so many gods right and uh, um, we we have well, my son asked this question a very long time ago and I told him uh, no it's it's not the con it's only those are names of gods but they are concepts right so those are all concepts but even we believe in a single single spiritual force that is there which is called the brahman so that's that's what we all believe in too but uh, different ways of uh, manifesting that is what what we do so um, that's that's exactly how we try to explain certain concepts which is very important so yeah cool. fantastic fantastic Anybody else like to share their thoughts? Yes, sir. Um, I think uh, Mahindra asked uh, that uh, there was some news about swastika in New York, and how do you respond to that? Yeah, I, I can. Okay, go ahead, Kanja. Sorry, Kanja. Yes, sir. I think uh, there was a response for that by created by VHP and uh, other, I think, one Jewish organization together because Jewish also use swastika in a different way. And so the uh, you know a joint response was created long time ago, and that can be I think is available you know what it is. Now what happens? Uh, most of the individually it's very difficult to de defend any kind of accusation. But if we get together, just like one organization like BHP, or there's another organization here called Hindu American. Uh, forgot the name right now. <laughs> yeah. H-A-A. Yeah, I know. What Federation. Is that? Uh, Hindu. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah. that kind of that organization is very active in defending Hinduism and all everything about Hinduism. So, you know, and I, you know, by heart support that organization by monetary uh, as well. And so I think the organizations have their duty. I think it is the duty of the organizations to defend that kind of problem issues. Okay, but individually it will be very difficult. At the most, you can teach your kids, you know, what to say if somebody asks you that. But there are so, so many I mean, questions. I mean, that's where Ganshamji and I mean Santosh by what what I was trying to emphasize is that uh, yes, uh, given that uh, Hindus by nature, as far as the, the dharma is concerned, they are not into marketing themselves, right? But given that we are less than 1%, and uh, I mean, Shivramji can give a lot more details that uh, there are Western interest people that intentionally wants to defame Hindu dharma. Like, for example, some time ago, in the state of California, there were more than 200 misrepresentations about dharma. So this is not uh, something that happened by mistake. But it is planned effort by Western interest people to defame Hindu dharma and move away Hindu kids from their own unique identity. And that's where I was trying to extract a, 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 a more um, specific example on how do you may teach I, dharma. May, may I? Yeah, yeah go ahead. ahead. Uh, Ganshamji, thanks. You, what you mentioned is right. I just posted in the chat that was a year ago or so, uh, the VHP, HSC, and all other organization uh, that petition New York thing, right? I posted in the chat for everyone's reference. Okay. The second one, you know, uh, the what Mahindraji mentioned is a big task, but uh, when what I wanted to teach my daughter when she was young, just to answer this kind of thing, is uh, 
uh, Pantini, I might have discussed this with Pantini and our other kids, saying that what is the uh, why we have to be proud or what is that is something unique in, in our dharma, which uh, like uh, uh, feed the poor, help the people in needy, don't be greedy, right? All, it's there in uh, all religions and which we do uh, agree that, you know, we don't have anything bad about that. But thing is, couple of things which I wanted to point out saying that this is only in Hindu Dharma, you can question about the God, right? So the other Dharma says that Holy, Holy Father, Holy Son, and the Demon, right? It is the, the Christ, the known form, one form, that is the God or the, the, the Holy Father. But here, no other religion gives you freedom to have your personalized God. Like Ganchamji said that he didn't go to temple, but in his home, he probably kept Ganesh or his wife was worshipped by Lakshmi Ji, right? So this is the only religion which gives you freedom to choose the personal God, okay? The second thing, what are you uh, also the same line say that, hey, it is the only religion where the God can be man, woman, or thing, right? So it, it's the, the, it is the holy son. It never says holy daughter. Holy daughter, they don't accept kind of, right? Similarly, Sir Paigamar also, it's only one, this one, right? Why can't a female be God? Uh, they don't have answers. Okay, they have any reason. So we hear, you want Lakshmi Ma or Vishnu Ji or you want a stone like Linga that has God or a tree, right? If many people worship tree, right? Many, many people worship uh, Samko, right? So so this gives, uh, that means you can personalize. You have, you have freedom to personalize. So that's more freedom. And the other thing I said, yeah. Yes, the primary class you tell uh, uh, the primary you learn about like science and social studies, right? Uh, as a new growth science, it's physics, math, science. And in, in inside math, Ganshamji give probably 100 branches, that the right kind of thing. So that's why simple, all other, like all other place, only one God, we also have one Parabrahma. But that is elementary, right? But if you want to study, explore more, when you say 33,000 car or whatever number, right? And you different perspective. So there is a more, if you want to study more, there's a deep material, not just one God done with it kind of thing. It's again up to you. You want to believe one form or multiple form. So what I used to stress is this freedom to believe in form, believe in type and believe the, the freedom to worship in the way you have. This is the most liberal and most freedom. That is the one thing. And second thing I used to, you know, bring up this one is the the regarding the salvation, right? Any time where the, uh, the church you go, you know, you bow, know, you are surrendered to Christ, you will get salvation. Same way you go to mosque, you surrender to Paigambar, you get salvation. Here also, Pandichi, Satnaran, Kata, they'll say Moksh Palete, Aap, Aap, Achche Moksh Palete, Wo sabhi hai, right? Kata mein. But the difference is, in the Christian salvation or Muslim for salvation, a non-believer does not get salvation. Right? Hindu, it doesn't say that, you know, uh, if you don't believe in Vishnu or don't believe in Krishna, don't believe in Ishwar, you don't get... There's this question of non-believer is that this demarcation between you are with me, you are not with me. You are believer, not believer is not there. If you want to believe, you believe. If you don't want to believe, don't believe. But if you don't believe, Hinduism does not say you won't get salvation. That is the second difference. Say that, hey, again, our God does not... Uh, do the, the, the what is that uh, the, uh, differentiation between believer and non-believer? If you are good, you are good. If you are bad, you are bad. Right? Just because you are not Christian, you don't become bad. Just because you are Christian, you are bad. Right? That is the second. Third one, I uh, they, they also used to say the karma karma theory is like my said. Like everybody say what you sow every year, so what you reap is what you sow. That is good. Uh, that's correct. Karma theory is a you number know, thing. There is other, other, other religion say that, you know, no, you go, you do confession and that your bad thing is God. But unfortunately, even in Hindu, too many priests also, Bhagavan ke samne, at the end of the, any Kata Puran, they say that, Oti Janma Krutam Prapam Smaranayana Vinashati, right? It says that, oh, you just say the name of the God, every pop is God. But that is not real. If you dig deep into the Dharma, it is always not true. There's a good for a good uh, and the bad, uh, right? If you do good, it goes grows good. If you do bad, it goes bad. And you will get the pala for the good, you will get the pala for the bad. 
and then there is no uh, you know this escape uh, by just go to guy oh i got a hindi mein main paisa dal dunga mujhe usse maaf kar do wo nahi hai i mean it is the distortion of this one so these are the things i just use to you know emphasize saying that it is the most liberal it is personalizable you can you can personalize and you can question and you can have individual yes, and it, it does not distinguish between the believer and non believer it for it just based on your action good action is for good bad action is for bad and going to the god giving dakshina to god or pandit or brahman does not remove your uh, you know officially yes, does not remove your six okay these are the six i shall stop here these are the three points unique i mean there are many but these are the unique points ऑफ and they were in a very small town in lexington in kentucky this was a cold cold town so uh, mandir no india school nothing so they started taking their kids to church to just give them some kind of religious training mm-hmm. so their parents too but you do a lot or you do a less for example we did uh, india school we did chimya mission we did vhpa camps because luckily we were in the washington dc area from the very beginning i mean from when the kids were young so everything was available but the end result my feeling is the same they don't follow up you never see them in the temple uh and things slowly starts evaporating in their mind i mean they just join the ministry that's my experience uh, and it's also documented from the fact that in our temples very rarely we see any second generation kids who were raised so anyway anybody has suggestion how how to undo this it doesn't end up like this so i mean you know let's just i mean carry on this i mean same thing uh, basically i wanted to uh hear from santosh and paddy right given santosh has a, like adult son and uh, paddy's kids are very young uh i mean how do they foresee carrying a strong hindu american identity right specifically for someone like santosh whose son might get married in next few years or something like that uh given that uh, uh united states is the melting pot of the world and we integrate everywhere right and uh, so 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 in like this kind of uh, scenario uh how do you think you and your child will maintain the hindu american identity oh very difficult question right so uh, i cannot speak for him and again keep in mind i mean there is no right or wrong answer okay everybody has a different yeah. experience no, 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 no. but but the thing is i cannot speak for him right um so um i do know that you know um he um uh, he is he he doesn't um you know what he call worship or doesn't follow any any rituals right now but um he does uh, come to satsangs he does does go to the temple with us when we go um when we go to india we make it a point that we visit uh, several temples and places of historic interest uh, especially religious interest so there is always that thing right so we try to show him what it is and uh, seems like he's very interested in all that uh, but again um given that they are they have a mind of their own and um they are in a totally different environment uh, there is no such thing as like you know you will marry the girl that i will find for you <laughs> right so that's i sorry guys it's not going to happen so uh he's going to show up one day and he's going to say this is the girl i'm going to marry and uh, my attitude at that time will be is that uh, well 
uh, it's my son and it's my son's wife, right? So that's what that's what it is. Uh, so he doesn't reduce. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't go down uh, in any stature if he goes. No, no, uh, marries, by, uh, let me just interrupt you here, just for a second. I mean, yeah. I do not mean that we should restrict our I mean, child getting married, getting like <laughs> married. I got it. I got it. I got that. Go I got that. No, no, you're not saying that, right? I, I was just saying that. That's that's that's, that's what's going to happen. We're all of the same same um, mindset here so uh, what's going to happen is like you know probably they they will still continue hopefully they will still continue to uh, follow our traditions and um, uh, celebrate the festivals um, and like that that they have to do and i hope that that's what that's what is going to happen <laughs> yeah cool uh, paddy your thoughts yeah sure um uh, I'll uh, get back to Pantani's, uh, Pantani as well. But uh, before that, I'll <clears throat> say that uh, how I'm instilling Dharma, uh, my religion, um, uh, my kid, uh, my daughter is like six years old. She loves uh, all uh, the religious things we do. She knows Hanuman Chalisa. She knows most of the uh, like uh, uh, chants, whatever we do. So every in the, every evening she sits for puja along with us. She does the puja. She celebrates all the festivals. She she loves everything, and she has lots of questions regarding each and every god. I mean, even when she watches YouTube, she watches uh, Hanuman, uh, like uh, Chota Bhim and all those stuff. So uh, I mean, Ramayana, Mahabharata. She knows most of the stuff. Who are the characters and uh, uh, what is the significance of each of them, along with. Uh, like if you ask a kid, like, why do we celebrate Diwali? Most of the teenagers won't be able to answer, but she knows why do we do that. Uh, similarly, Dashera. And I mean, this is how I'm, I think that I'm going on the right path where, uh, and she's also cooperating where uh, she, she likes it. So in a way, I'm lucky that uh, she loves it. And that's how I'm instilling it. And uh, uh, I mean, when, when I studied in a convent school, uh, like Pantini mentioned that she used to wear saris and bindi. Frankly saying, I was born and raised in India in a convent school. It was not allowed. Okay. So I, I re, it's really appreciable that, that you were carrying it and uh, you were defending it. Because the thing is, when you are in US, I mean, uh, even in India, people tease you like, uh, oh, you are wearing a kurta. Because they were like they wore pants and shirts. And I mean, maybe it's a, a style statement for them following the Western culture. But uh, like you doing that and uh, following the uh, Indian culture here in US, that is really appreciable. Um, and I mean, did you feel at some point wherein people would tease you and maybe you are not able to answer whatever questions they ask? And why do you do that? I mean, simple question like, oh, why do you wear it? Oh, I mean, no, the white people, Gore Log, the people who live, who are like well, normal, like Caucasian, black, whatever, American, they will never say anything. They will actually like your dresses. They'll say, oh, you look so pretty in this outfit. Oh, no. you look like a princess. <laughs> Only that are Indian people. They're the ones that will uh. comment or will say, <laughs> oh, why are you wearing this? Oh, people will think less of you. People will look at you because of like where you come from and they will like won't give you any opportunities or anything like that. And I said, well, OK, if that is true, then whatever. But I'm still going to wear it. <laughs> <laughs> See, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, this is a fantastic point, and I mean, this is one reason why I do not rely on brown skin only for Hindu dharma. I am willing to propagate and share knowledge on Hindu dharma to blue, black, white skin, any skin that is interested. So, having said that, Paddy, you can continue. My bad, sorry. I think I'm good. I, that is what I wanted to ask. Like, when you know the reason behind whatever you are doing. Only then you can defend uh, whatever you're doing. That is what I feel. Like someone asks you like, uh, okay, why do you celebrate Diwali? Uh, why do you wear that kurta? Because there was uh, the other day, there was some guy with a Bible coming to our house, uh, home and he was asking me, okay, uh, I'm, I'm telling about the glory of Bible and all. I was like, I'm a Hindu and I don't follow this. So tell me about Hinduism, he said. 
how how can i convert to hinduism i said you have to be a born hindu you cannot get converted into something i mean you 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 follow hinduism that's a that's a way of living it's not a religion it's not the religion as such i mean he started arguing but i i was like at a point wherein i cannot argue with him because he has knowledge about his religion maybe i am not completely aware not, my my base is not that clear because not everything i can explain logically to all the people because not ex- like everything needs to be uh, needs to have a reason in other religions maybe they can defend it with science but not everything in uh, hinduism has a logical reason for everything so yeah uh, that is what i feel shiram do you want to respond or uh, dhananjay or somebody no i want to respond to that sure every point which is you know the unique to this one which is uh, you know first first of all we should uh, uh, that, uh, put that in our uh, circle and family that what is it uh, you know distinguishes uh, and then same points and i mean i don't i mean when they come just my thing is they don't have any deep knowledge either okay so again just if you ask question why your god is only man why cannot be female you know you this that you know you know they discriminate between a man and woman the government patini can say more you know the man and woman and uh, so and then you discriminate between build you know you say that oh also your god itself is jealous in its own 10th commandment is that i you know the, the i am a jealous god he operates in one of the 10 commands so your god is jealous if the god why should i accept it a jealous god as my god right my god does not discriminate these are the some simple thing is sufficient and don't ever think that they have any and if they are very deep studied kind of thing believe me they don't come to that kind of job to you know sell uh, this <laughs> one but you few hours you know for <laughs> the eight dollars per hour right that's right yeah <laughs> so so i mean i see we have a youngster here rudra would you like to share anything here rudra no you you guys are doing good i mean yeah Bro, come on, man. <laughs> anything anything Rudra you'd like to share from your high school days? Um yeah, okay. So, uh in high school we had uh world religion and they taught very little about Hinduism and all the various attacks and stuff, but made a big deal about Holocaust and thousands of Jews dying, you know, millions of Jews dying. And they, you know, it just didn't really seem fair. So, I mean, I I would really like to see more uh Hindu like more of our history being taught in in school. That's that's for sure. That's one. And um I mean a lot less assumptions of you know of Sanatan Dharma uh being taught because they're just like honestly very clueless. They they didn't even put the effort to find out. It was just like yeah, the oldest religion doesn't really have stuff, you know, just to say stuff and then done. and i was like okay this is this is just like trying to teach other things pushed on us instead of you know what is what just trying to get us to learn something so yeah that that's pretty much it i didn't think it was fair so so i mean as far as i'm concerned right uh, what i have learned through my experiences uh non indians are more than welcoming to listen to you at my workplace including my chief technology officer at the us patent office as well as one of the executive at the bank of america i literally did a presentation on hindu dharma to them and that cleared a lot of their doubts they became more comfortable listening into my i mean my perspective on why i have certain reservations you know i mean i mean i mean i mean, uh, I mean they are like more more i mean forthcoming and they are like more understanding about how and why we think the way we think certain things you know so having said that my only suggestion would be for people to specifically hindus uh, to be confident do some research and talk about your dharma educate people right if we can do that then the I mean that the I mean then the I mean resolutions like the one in new york that is being tried to pass to like uh, 
to like uh, account uh, swastika as a as a hate symbol you know will not will not come into play you know? 